Welcome to the Horror Movie Showdown, episode 66. In the last episode, I promised you that I would be taking you back to the 80s. But what I didn't tell you was that today's episode would be featuring an alien-inspired sci-fi horror enemy. It is Lily Cat. The movie starts out with the usual introduction of the crew, who are mostly quite easy to remember, as they are all stereotypes. We have the gun-happy macho man. I'm the careful type. There might be aliens, kid. We have the vain cat girl. We have the analytical Australian. We have the socially awkward guy, and so on. The crew is led by the captain, who is about to go on his last trip before retirement. That's a plotline I've never seen before. As a famous comic book character once said, I'm getting too old for this kind of shit. The mission is to travel into space to look for resources on the behalf of the corporation. 20 years of traveling will only age the crew around one year. Hmm. I thought that Christopher Nolan came up with this concept because he's such a genius. Just like an alien, the crew sleeps in deep sleep capsules. And there's also a cat on board. Some distance out, the ship picks up an emergency call and it automatically collects a floating object that it identifies as a living body. Could this be an alien life form? I sure think so. As an alien, the cat is also the first one to pick up on its presence. Now after 20 years of traveling, the crew wakes up as they have reached their destination and they are met with a warning message. Captain Hamilton, I'm afraid I have some rather unpleasant news to report. It appears that you have two people aboard who are not who they claim to be, nor are they employees of SINCAM. So it seems it is also a whodunit kind of movie, a bit like The Thing. It also reminds me of that intruder game, as the movie even has a sabotage of the oxygen system. So what do these intruders want? Once in a while these guys fake their way onto a starship so they can spend 40 or 50 years hibernating in space without getting much older. When they get back to Earth, no one's around anymore to remember their crime. That's actually kind of smart. Losing just two years of one's life to get a chance to start over. It doesn't take long until the first death goes down. But it isn't because of one of the intruders, but rather some weird parasite. Take a look inside his lungs. Fascinating. I've never seen anything move like that. Some of the scenes in this movie seem awfully similar to those in The Thing. And they even have to test everyone to find out who is the intruders. You were the only one that could have got to that blood. We'll do you last. <laughs> the similarities keep piling up. And even the parasite is very similar to the imitating parasite in The Thing. But again, Alien and The Thing are not the worst movies to rip off. So it turns out that one of the intruders is a guy called Hero. I wonder if he could be the hero of the movie. Well, let's find out on the scoreboard. The movie has five kills that are not so interesting or bloody. It gets a nudity score of four as we see a naked girl in a cocoon. I wouldn't call the movie scary, but it is atmospheric enough for a scariness score of 2. When the animation study chose which movies to rip off, they really picked the best of the best. Additionally, the movie manages to bring in some of its own original ideas, especially ideas surrounding time distortion. I just passed 240. Carolyn's 150 years old, right? I'm 151. <sighs> If you have already watched all the sci-fi classics and cannot get enough of this genre, you should definitely check this one out. It gets an overall score of 6. I'm just about to abandon ship, so thank you for watching and I will catch you later.